Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Real News Network Saturday morning live stream. Me and Miss Pippa are here today. She is so excited. She heard me start talking and then she's like, my goodness, who are these people here? And so guys, good morning to you all. I'm so glad I actually started on time today. So lots going on in the royal sphere. Obviously, Meghan and Harry are still missing but we got two weird things last night. One is that they officially announced via Variety, and so this is one of the trades within the entertainment industry, that they have done some shifting around with their staff members, which is just weird. Nobody announces that, and they have no official projects. They, announce. they just announced that. Sorry. Um, they have a head of podcasting, and it's like, yay. <laughs> And they have a set of scripted shows. In addition, we also have some uh, some news from the, this is from the Daily Mail, obviously take it with a grain of salt, but that Megan and was worried that pe too many people would start talking about the claw. So her like two-handed death grip on Harry. And I was like, you know, if you just went with him and did clutch at him as if you guys couldn't go two seconds or two feet without touching each other, that would actually solve that problem. <laughs> Don't like avoid your husband. Just avoid doing the action that everybody is criticizing you for. Those are like two different things. <laughs> so anyways, very, very strangeness going on. But we also have Catherine and William did an engagement this week in Windsor. And then we have the King and Queen of the Netherlands. So that's uh, King Wilhelm Alexander and Queen Maxima of the Netherlands. They are taking their daughter and heir, Catherine Amalia, on her first foreign tour. So they are touring all the Caribbean islands that are still attached to the country of the Netherlands. So I can't remember where they're at today, but they'll be going to Aruba and then a couple other places that are still territories or whatever of the Netherlands. So I just thought that was really fun to see her doing that. We also have, I need to get my, all my fashion pulls up to date, but Crown Princess Victoria looked great this week. And I was like, yes, because sometimes her fashion, I'm like, oh, what are you thinking? So it was just so great to see her. So yes, guys, so much going on. And so we have D. good morning. Good morning to Yolanda from Ireland, Jane from Tampa, Lee from Cape Town. We have Joanne. Good morning from Pennsylvania and Nikki and Abby. Hello, Blanca from Arizona. All oh, the friend weeks. Yay. I'm finally getting to catch my first live stream instead of the replay crew, Brittany's knowledge and bubbly personality. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Especially on a Saturday morning. I am not a morning person. <laughs> so yeah, I'm so glad I can bring some of my some of my happiness, hopefully, and bubbliness. Yes. And I will have, uh, I'll wait to see maybe if we can get to at least a thousand people on the live stream before I have a, a I may have an exciting announcement today. So it's going to be really exciting. Uh, Cindy Lou, good morning from Florida. Brittany is the inevitable downfall of Harry and Megan that some of us have been longing for finally here. I, I'm going to be getting to think it is. <laughs> I'm really beginning to think it is. That variety piece, I'm like, I read through it. I was like, what? So they're so they have no official project they're announcing. This is a trade. They're just announcing that they're shuffling around staff members and that staff members are leaving, including the person who was over marketing and they're dissolving that position. So this person did the marketing for Harry and Meghan, the archetypes, and then uh, Harry's book as well. And then we have as and then we have somebody else. Oh, that Nick, what's his name? Nick? His last name is Holt. And he uh, was on Harry and Meghan's reality TV show, and he was he is head of their of, of their philanthropic arm. But now they have somebody else who's like co-chair of it, and so it's like, you know, if you have two people doing the same position, inevitably they kind of cancel each other out. So I don't anticipate that's going to go super well. So it's just weird, and there's just a couple other things I'm like, huh. And again, no new projects. So we had the Invictus games. That's all they have. And they basically officially said that they have no second season of Archetypes yet. It's hasn't been it hasn't been formalized or something to that effect. But you know, basically highly anticipated. It's like, but they haven't done it yet. And we all know that Spotify just shuffled everything, let go six hundred staff members, and is not happy with their podcasting efforts, just generally. So Harry and Meghan. It's, it's just be interesting to see where they decide to go with that, uh, if they decide to pull them or not. So I think, yes, I think to me that whole announcement was just, especially because it just was obviously just completely PR fluff. That's what it was. Because uh, normally that wouldn't even be an article really, uh, unless you had like a scoop or something. But this was clearly like a press release. They turned it into an article for Variety. Uh, so this is, yeah, it's just interesting 
interesting stuff to see. Okay. And so <laughs> good morning. We have a couple others, MPAG, and then we also have Margo Klein. They need to have their titles removed. I'm thinking so too. Uh, and so we have Judy and um, MAPG and we have Meow Benji. Oh, good afternoon from Vienna. I haven't been to, no, I haven't been to Vienna yet. I've been to Innsbruck, Innsbruck up in the mountains when we were driving down to Italy. So I'm hoping to spend like a lot more time in Europe. So, so exciting because I love Europe. It's so fun. Okay. So DW, good morning from freezing Northwestern Montana. Oh, I bet you it is cold. It is cold. So yes, keep your coffee with you. I have my hot cocoa. I just have Starbucks hot cocoa right now. I haven't made a new order from Woodard's yet. Um, so <laughs> good morning, Rebecca from Minnesota, Kate London from Seattle. So DW says, no worries. As soon as the coronation is over, she will make one last trashy deal about the RF and we'll leave Tom Harry move on to the next victim. <laughs> yeah, that may happen. That may definitely happen. Yeah, there's there's just not that much. There's just not that that much left for them. Okay, so we do have a thousand people on. And sorry, okay. I got I gotta manage the dog. So I have two dogs now on the couch. Uh so so my official announcement is, I'm super excited, is that I have an interview scheduled on Monday with Angela Levin. So she has a new book coming out about Camilla. And so I will ask her a bit about that and a bit about Harry and Megan as well. And so I am super stoked about that. I want to do more of these. It's just going to be so, so fun. And I think it's going to be absolutely just awesome. So I'm hoping you guys are really excited about that because I, I am, because I want to do more and talk to like so many of the royal reporters and everything like Richard K and Richard Eden. And then we have Emily Andrews and Emily Nash and we have um, Richard Palmer, just like so many. So I'm just super stoked about that. So uh, she wrote a book about Camilla. She's written about Harry. And so um, she was actually really kind one time and actually retweeted something uh, of mine. And so I was just super, and it like the article blew up and it was so nice. It was like over a year ago. And so that's awesome. Um, so I was just super super stoked because I enjoy interviews. And then obviously if you, the, those who are signed up to my newsletter, so Royal Wire, you guys will be the first to get a view of the video. Cause I'll put a link in the email and then it'll be available to everybody a little bit, like maybe 24, 48 hours later. So yay. So exciting. All right. Oh, Samantha, thank you so much for the tip. Good morning from Louisiana new subscriber, but I love your content. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. It's a lot of hard work, but so fun. And I just absolutely, absolutely just am so like thrilled about it. So it's, this has been so awesome. And so guys as well, if you want to, if you have like a question or a comment or something you want to discuss, it's sometimes easier to just put it in all caps because it helps me find it a bit. All right, Sharon, did you hear that Harry will be nominated for a Grammy next year? Well, I heard that there are promoting him to receive a Grammy next year. Will he get a Grammy next year? No idea. No idea. Uh, the, it's, I mean, it's, he'll have competition from other people, <laughs> like a lot of other people. And so it'll just be fascinating to see if, if that happens or not. And again, it's just, it's, it's hard to describe anymore. Cause I feel like Hollywood, when you see them and everything, I mean, I used to watch like all the award shows and, and stuff. And I just, really enjoyed that. I haven't watched an award show in forever because it's all stuff that nobody has ever heard of or watched. <laughs> and they all just pat each other on the back. And you know, even with the People's Choice Awards, it was such a farce. So it just doesn't feel like anymore that people really win it because they deserve it in so many of these instances. Like sometimes that's true. But a lot of times it's like they're just filling a quota or they just they just feel like they have to vote for this person for X, Y, and Z reason. So here he may get a nomination. He may be, you know, win, but I don't think it's really all that, all that exciting. Oh, Beth, Mo McCleaver. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad you love the channel. I do too. <laughs> I love all you guys. Cause it's been so, it doesn't work quite as well. If you guys aren't as amazing as you are. Okay. Sorry. I'm trying to watch the dogs at the same time. All right. Tave Guzman, super sticker. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Um, Panna Gotia. Do you think Megan will come out with a bang after her disappearance? I'm going to guess yes. So, so the, the Daily Mail article was interesting because it said, well, she wanted to avoid anybody talking about the claw. And I'm like, well, you could just stop doing the claw. You know, that would fix it. You don't have to disappear. You just have to stop. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. All right. <laughs> 
trying to make sure Miss Pippa doesn't hurt herself jumping off the couch. So sorry about that. Um, so she's still recovering. She broke her elbow several weeks ago. So uh, she can, she gets up just fine, but it's just getting her down. I just want her to be very, very careful so she doesn't hurt herself. So um, I think she will. And I think, I think she still wants to do a memoir of her own. I don't think it'll sell as well as Terry. She just doesn't have as much dirt on the royal family. What is she going to talk about? Do we care? Do, do I care really about her struggles in Hollywood? No, I could care less. I really could. So I don't know what she's going to talk about. And there's just so many questions about her childhood and everything. Like that stuff could be somewhat interesting. But at the same time, I'm just thinking kind of not. And so it'll just be it'll just be fascinating to see what, what she comes out with, but I'm sure she has something like grand planned and maybe, maybe they'll end up at the Oscars or something. Who knows? All right. Cindy. Oh, thank you so much for the super sticker. Oh, Maria asks, hi from the UK. Love your channel. Where do you think Megan is hiding? I, I, I would imagine she's at home, but she could be away too. Cause they had just such terrible rains and flooding. And there was talk that Megan was there with Harry in New York during his Colbert thing, but we didn't see her. So I don't know if that's true or not. So yeah, I just, I don't know, but I would imagine she's back home. She could be in Canada, but I mean, she has no connections to Canada anymore. She's not friends with Jessica Maroney. So, I mean, she's burned so many bridges, so it's just hard to know. Does the monarchy get custody of the grandchildren? So I have not personally research this to know exactly how it works. But my understanding is that Charles technically has guardianship over the Wales's children. And the queen technically had guardianship over Catherine and William's children as well. Do, is this a guardianship they exercise? No, no. So I think in theory, but I don't know how far down the line that extends. That's, that, that's my question. That I don't know. Does it go all the way down to Eugenie and Beatrice's children, or is it just the direct heir's children or just the direct monarch's children? I'm not sure. And so I don't know, um, but the monarchy would not get custody. No, they would not fight for custody. They're not, they're, they won't, if Harry and Meghan get divorced, they'll just be like, well, that's Harry and Meghan's issue. That's not really our issue. Our issue is the titles. Those are the only things and anything that Meghan has access to that technically either belongs to the kingdom, belongs to the, the crown estate, belongs to Diana. Those would be contentious issues. Guardianship over the children would not be. Uh, be, just because, again, it just looks bad if Charles is going, well, I want to take custody of the grandkids. That looks awful. So I was just reading today. So Priscilla Presley apparently has filed a complaint trying to wrangle the trust that Priscilla left her daughter Riley in charge of and regain control over it. So that kind of stuff just leaves a really bad taste in somebody's mouth. And because it looks like just a money grab. And so just, just giving something, something, um, else. Uh, so Chris asks, do you have a day job? Yes, I do. <laughs> Ergo, I do not sleep very much. Cause I, I literally work all day at a, a regular job and then I come home. I maybe have 45 minutes to an hour, maybe to try to do something else, or I try to fit something else. And then I do channel stuff. And then hopefully, hopefully fingers crossed, I make it to the gym, but that's really a hit or miss. And usually I get there much later than I should if I get there at all. So yes, um, hopefully going to go full-time sometimes here soon, just because uh, the channel is doing so well in the coronations this year. And we have the golden Jubilee in Sweden. Oh, other Swedish news, the King. Oh my gosh. He, that guy puts his foot in his mouth. My gosh. I feel so sorry for his PR team. So apparently he has said in an interview kind of leading up to his golden jubilee well first he got in trouble for saying that he still preferred that his son was his heir over his daughter who's older so crown princess victoria who everybody loves uh he still wishes his son was heir and this has been something talked about like forever and then he said in another interview what is what is the secret to a long marriage you know because he's been married to his wife for uh you know 40 plus years now and he goes Look. <laughs> he goes separate bedrooms. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's just lovely. Like I understand if you have like a CPAP machine or something, but you really just sound like a jerk. <laughs> I'm like, Oh man. Oh man. He just sounds like a jerk to me. Um, Oh, Carol says, love your show. Okay, keep it going. Finally, I was able to write to you. Big fan. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Carol. I'm so glad you were able to write. Sorry if sometimes I'm a little slow trying to respond to everything. There's just so, so much. 
um, going on right now. So Teresa says a Grammy for what every word they've received cheapens it for people who actually deserve it. So it would be one for reading his audiobook. Sorry, I didn't mention that. So yes, the Grammy would be for reading his audiobook. So Obama got one, and Harry and Meghan again. They think they're Barack and Michelle Obama, but Barack Obama was president of the United States. Harry was the sixth in line to the British throne. The chasm between the two is ginormous, and Michelle Obama. I think she. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't know her biography very well, but you know, she's a lot, she's a lawyer. I believe she went to Harvard with Barack. And so uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty positive. She went to an Ivy league school. And so this idea that, and Megan just went to Northwestern, but she just did whatever she did. Cause it's a question. Did she do theater communications or international relations? It's really a huge question mark. So uh, I like just the cat and Megan just went into acting. She was still just desperate to act and be famous. And so it's like, so there's just no comparison between the two. <laughs> and so I'm like, what? All right. Oh, Jackie, thank you so much for the super sticker. Oh, your lipstick color is gorgeous. Glad I finally got to join in a live stream. Yes. So it is Lisa Eldridge. So she is a makeup artist and she's done stuff for Chanel and Lancome. And she's done like runway shows and everything. She does like Kate Winslet's makeup a lot and Cara Delevingne. And so she is, um, she, she has her own beauty line, but she sells it directly from her website. So, um, and the, the color I like here, which I love is called kitten mischief. So it's like my favorite. So I, I like it. If you're interested, Lisa Eldridge, her stuff is great. Um, trying to see if I had it here, but no, I don't. Um, so yeah, highly recommend if you're interested. All right. Oh, Pat Lane, good commentary. Good morning from Colorado. Love your commentary. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad. All right. Susan Thomas would be fascinating to ever interview Rebecca English from the Daily Mail. I find her fascinating. Yes, I would love to because I feel like what we're missing in the United States as well, because we have People Magazine, Us Weekly and stuff like that. And we just have Omen Scobie spouting whatever nonsense he spouts at the moment. But the true royal reporters, the true people who are part of that beat, have a totally different perspective than what is reported here in the United States. They have a completely different perspective. And I just feel like it's not something that's discussed enough because I feel like people would, it would be really interesting to people and it's just a really critical aspect to share. Oh, Christy, thank you so much for the super sticker. You are so kind. Oh, Jane Bryant, Trevor Colt gave you a shout out. I'm not sure if. It was last night or this morning. He said you had excellent content. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad. That's so nice of him to do so. It's just, yeah, I just love doing all this commentary stuff and it's crazy. And I'm just, yeah, I just had one video too that did just insanely well. I'm like, what the heck? It's closing in on half a million views. My first one, it'll probably be my first one to cross that finish line, which I was not expecting. So it was the one about the Spotify deal. Was not expecting that one to do that well. <laughs> I just kept watching and going, said 200, 300, 400, really? So um, it's just been, it's just so fun and crazy. All right. Samantha Arnold said, do you see divorce in their future? They both look miserable now compared to their first interview. Uh, I gave them five years. That was always my, my initial reaction. Now, granted, because they've had, um, I think a lot of, tr since they've moved from the UK, I think that makes it a little less likely. Hold on. Okay. So I, I think that's a little less likely, but I don't feel like they have anything in common. I've always felt like that's been one of their biggest issues is that they have nothing in common. They have their philanthropy. But if you really think about it, what, what do these two people have in common? Nothing really. Um, so it's just, I, I never gave them a ton of time, but I think they look, I would imagine the stress of their whole life is really getting to them because you got to think too. So Harry and Megan, They've signed all these deals. They have to make all these contracts work. Spotify, I don't think is happy. I think out of the three big things, so this is their Spotify, their Netflix, and their book deal. Spotify is the least happy. Archetypes did okay, but it never really beat out Joe Rogan. Even their head of content who was let go or her left basically said that every, Joe Rogan blew, blew everything out of the water. Blew everything out of the water. So Megan's podcast being number one, basically she just confirmed that that was just they, they manipulate that to try to get attention on things is basically what she admitted to. And 
I, I just think at the end of the day, I think the stress of their life and having to create content because I don't think they can do it. I mean, I, I was just shocked by the, the article in Variety. I was like, wow, you guys are just seriously beginning to panic, aren't you? Just the stress of their life, I think, is just going to get to them. If you guys are wondering whose little head popped up, that was little Miss Bella. Mel Bella is gray. Pippa is black and a little bit of brown on her head. So Pippa's in my lap right now. And they are inspecting each other. So that's fun. Okay. So, oh, Lizzie B. Thank you so much for the tip. I want the Scottish hottie to keep an eye on them if they go to the coronation. Hopefully they won't go. Yeah, that would be awesome. What is this? Majors? Oh, oh, gosh. Now I can't remember his name. Yes. Yeah, so he is a very handsome looking guy. And he is there pretty much all the time when it comes to different events and stuff that the king and queen are at. And so it would just be great to see him. I just love that he was like watching them at the church. And again, they just got totally shoved in the back. It's, it was, it was so crazy how in the back they were. I was just shocked, but I called it. I called that they would be kind of publicly humiliated in my channel when I was first starting. And I was like, absolutely right. Uh, Lindsay asks, is Harry's wife trying to now distance herself from his book by saying she had gentle concerns about it? Love your channel. Yes, I think so. I think so. I think there was genuine, some genuine concerns. And I mean, she, I think she comes across terribly in that book. I really do. And it just basically confirms that the stories about her were true. When Harry has this whole discussion about the fight between him and William, and he's saying, well, William's saying the staff is... William is saying that she is rude, difficult, and abrasive. Harry he just parrots, well, she says he's, you're just parroting the media. And anybody with half a brain knows that you share staff. Like, how can you debate? Like, William's not parroting the media. He heard it probably from the media and then went ask, and asked the staff involved in it. <laughs> so it's just one of those things. I'm like, what the heck? So, yeah, it's just crazy. Okay. Oh, Diana, thank you so much for the tip. Good morning from Portugal, Britain's oldest ally. Oh, yes. I've been to Portugal. I spent about two weeks in Coimbra and I spent some time in Lisbon as well. So beautiful country. Reminded me a lot of California, actually. It's really, really pretty because it just like the setting and everything. It was gorgeous. Um, John asked, does oh, Scobie get paid by Megan and Harry for defending them? I mean, seriously, he just seems like their PR. <laughs> He really does. And I'm like, how can you, you're like their PR arm. Like I just, I, you just see it. And I thought it was really weird and kind of funny that his latest interview, he was like wearing a ball cap, really trying to like, I feel like look American and kind of disguise the fact that I feel like he looks so weird. And I hate saying that because I don't want genuine critique of him to get marred up in how he looks because that has really nothing to do with it. But I just thought him being in a baseball cap was super odd because I've never seen him in a baseball cap before. And so it's just super, super strange. Oh, so Gail asks, have you thought about getting Pippa stairs to help her love your channel? Yeah, I did have some stairs. I got one time and she just doesn't like them. And so we'll try something else, but my um, sister's actually moving out of our apartment and I'll have the whole thing. So I'll move into another, um, the other bedroom and I have a, a bed set that's lower to the ground. The one I currently have technically belongs to her. Um, and it's just really, really high. And so that's what, but she should be able to, I mean, she's jumped off the couch since she got her cast off. I'm just trying to minimize it the best I can. So she doesn't hurt herself by accident. Oh, Renee, enjoy. I enjoy having hot cocoa with you on Saturday mornings. Oh, I'm so glad. Hot cocoa is the best. It really is. It really is. Uh, Pri, uh, Priyanka asks, hi, Brittany. I'm a new subscriber. Love your channel and content. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're really enjoying it. That's always makes me so happy. <laughs> oh, I have two doc gowns, uh, Bogart and Harley. Miss Pippa is the cutest. And I know how worried you were about her. Sent many prayers for her big fan, Carol from New York. Thank you for her hard work. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, she's doing a lot better and she's she still picks her paw up and stuff, but she's getting more used to to moving it around and stuff, which is good, which is good. I want her to get back to normal as best she can. Uh, Kristen says, hi, Brittany. Um, love your content. Thank you so much. I know, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for the tip. And I said, I, and you said, I know a lot of us are in Harry and Meghan burnout. Can you do a video about Princess Anne or another less covered media royal? Yes, I do plan on doing that. The Harry and Meghan stuff just does so well that it's like, 
Ugh. But I really want to part of um, hopefully what we'll shift to later this year is just doing a lot of content about other royals. I want to do like top 10 lists and stuff about royal scandals, royal history, just so many different things. Um, but when it comes to news things, yeah, because it would be great to do like a contrast between Anne and Harry in so many ways, because that is huge. And just the differences in spares and how spares have reacted to that role. Cause I feel like Carrie just comes across as incredibly bitter and it's, it's like, he's known this from day one. This is not a surprise that he's a spare. It's like not a surprise. So I just don't understand why he's so like flummoxed about this now. It's always been the case, bud. always been the case. Jen, Jen, do you think problem is going to remove the Sussex title? I think they're maybe moving towards that in a way they probably weren't before. I think that it's a huge, it's a huge deal. And, but I think it needs to be done because I've said this before and I think it's true is that you do need to have a threat in place for other situations like Harry's. You need to have a threat in place. It's like, if you don't want to do this, that's fine. But this title goes that no, no, no questions, no, no grace period or anything like that. It's either in or out. You get this or you don't. What, what's your choice? And I think that's a, that's what they need to do. That's what they need to do now. So hopefully they will go ahead and go in that direction because I think that's what we really need for, to protect the monarchy in the future. That's definitely what's needed. <laughs> okay. Um, Meta says, I did not buy Harry's book and I will not buy hers. Yeah. I won't buy either. There's either. <laughs> so I didn't buy any of theirs either. Somebody was kind enough to share their digital copy with me. Um, so I'm going to go over here. Sharon, thank you so much. Thank you for the super sticker. Uh, Tonya Tolly, do you think King Charles would look weak by inviting Harry and Meghan to the coronation? Uh, no, no. Uh, I think he would look weak if he made them a big part of the ceremony, like placing them in the procession, putting them on the balcony. I mean, if I was looking at all the things, I think if more of the family's in the procession, that's fine. But the, he, they definitely shouldn't be on the balcony. To me, that would be a sign of weakness. They need to be off the balcony. They probably need to not be in the procession. They need to be in the back of the church or in a second, third row, much like they were at the Queen's Jubilee. That was where Harry was sat, technically in order of seniority. He was below Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie, and he's higher up in the line of succession. That was really a slap in the face. They put him as far away as humanly possible from Catherine and William. That's just, that's how they design the situation. And that's what they'll do. I'm sure that time as well. I mean, we had the famous candle incident in the church during the queen's funeral. And we also had, if you watch the live stream, when the women were going to, I believe it was just her lying in state, they, they came out, Catherine came out, the camera panned and then Megan came out with Sophie. And as soon as their car was about to get in frame, it snapped to a wide shot. And that tells you, I think, so much is that even like the media was trying to minimize the Megan. Um, minimize Megan's ability to be in the media as much as possible. Ah, uh, uh, Zuma, Z Zuma. All right. Oh, good morning. Thank you. Keep up the hard work. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. I'm just not really good at pronunciations. It's something I struggle with. Um. Carol says, I feel like um, Megan will not show up for the coronation. Love your hard work. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, some days it is harder work than others. So, uh, see, I, I feel mixed about this because I don't, I see where Harry and Megan may not be, may not attend the coronation. But I'm like, but what else do you guys have? You have the Invictus Games documentary. And as far as we know, that's it. Megan did this random thing when she was doing her variety interview earlier this year she's like oh what happened to romantic comedies we should do more romantic comedies i was like well megan do you have an idea or are you just spouting nonsense about loving romantic comedies those are two different things and it's just it'll be just interesting to see if that's the direction they go in and if they can produce anything new or interesting but at this point like all they have is the monarchy if they're smart they'll stay away and they'll do their own thing but also they're desperate for that attention and validation and reminding everybody that they're, um, they're so royal. So that's it. So, um, oh, always scrappy. Oh, oh my goodness. My day sucks. I'm at work. Glad you're here. Oh, I'm glad I'm here too. I hope your day gets better. I know work, especially on a Saturday is hard. I did that sometimes and it was just, uh, 
It wasn't the best for sure. Uh, Mad ID says, did you see the SCOBY interview where he defended Harry and Megan despite Harry throwing him under the bus? When will he give up? I don't get his, his like his desire to just destroy his own public reputation <laughs> by flip-flopping on stuff. Cause again, I go back to like, well, Harry's like, well, she didn't have that, you know, car kidnapping training. I was like, I've had that training. I've had that training. I was going to definitely some dangerous countries and they, they, they required everybody to have this level of training and it's intense and it's intense. And I have no doubt Megan went through that training. I have no doubt, especially when they were going to South Africa, because there are areas of South Africa that are quite dangerous. I mean, and she's even the woman who refused to wear her own engagement ring in South Africa. It just shows you how much she trusted the people there. And I have no doubt she had that training. And Elmet Scobie was given a lot of his information directly from Megan. And so it's like, so either they lied to you or now you're lying to cover up their lying. And I'm like, that's just dumb on everybody's part that's just so dumb and just completely self-defeating in so many ways I just it, it stuns me that Omid Scobie still has a job because I don't think anybody in the royal community talks to him I know he gets the press releases and he has maybe a couple people but I feel like he gets his all his reporting is from secondhand sources because I doubt anybody in the palace talks to this guy because the only foreign royal tours he went on, as far as I'm aware, is with Meghan and Harry. After that, um, I'm sure he was entirely banned from going on any foreign tours. Ah, <laughs> joy in my mind. Your content is way, be way beyond better than allegedly journalistic stuff. Oh, thank you. You definitely work as a professional journalist here. I try. I, I wanted to be a royal correspondent and I had no clue how to get that job because it's like a cushy gig. So people want this gig. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to create my own because <laughs> I don't feel like um, people do it right anyways. At least in America, I feel like it's harder to get the good information, especially of the other families and how they interact. I mean, I know there's some sites that are royal dedicated that I think provide some good news coverage and stuff. And I do want to do actually more news at some point, but I, I'm not on the ground reporting. So I find that I'm just regurgitating what somebody else has reported, but I find commentary interesting because there's always a story underneath the story and somebody else can cover the story, but the story underneath the story, that's interesting. Um, Ramble says, do you think if Harry left the for the coronation, he would be allowed back in the States given his track record? Well, with his drug acknowledgements that's actually a decent question i think he would be let back in i don't think they would um obviously especially now with the current administration that we have they are buddy buddies so i don't think anything would happen but still it just does look hypocritical but you know that's that is the thing celebrities get special treatment it is what it is so jen jen says can harry and his children be removed from the line of succession uh, i think that should be something that's possible i don't know how easy that would be and so it's just one of those things. It's just a huge question. Um, but I think, yeah, I don't, if those kids are growing up in the United States, if they have American accents, if they have no connection to the UK whatsoever, because they've hardly been to the country, why do they need titles? And why do they need a place in the line of succession? What do they know about the UK? Nothing. They know nothing about it. Their father hates it. Why would you let them have any semblance to the throne? And I think, too, because things can happen even in this day and age. Helicopter crashes, plane crashes. Sadly, they still happen. Um, best to just eliminate the possibility. Um, Elizabeth says the Herkles and the Obamas are separated by chasm of IQ. Yes, I think so. Sorry, the dogs have been like on and off the couch all day today. Uh, yeah, they they have huge differences in IQs. So it's like, eh, I don't think I don't think they're that good. Okay, so just coming down here. Oh yes, Jane Bryan says I heard Princess Martha of Norway has postponed her wedding because her shaman fiance direct Verit because he's battling severe kidney disease. Yes, I heard that too, and I I did quip and. Maybe this is in poor taste. It's amazing that the guy who was selling talismans to fight off COVID got COVID, that the guy who tells even children that asks children, why did you want cancer? Why did you get cancer? Because you, you obviously invited the cancer that somehow he has severe kidney disease and apparently can't fight it off himself. I'm sorry. I, I know like she probably hates the criticism of him, but he's just such, he's such a hack. 
you just, oh, those type of people, I just can't stand them because they prey on the vulnerabilities of others to get them to buy whatever thing they want. And I just think that's, ugh. Yeah, he's just, ugh, I don't get it at all. Um, a, um, Ur Urban Chuck asks, Brittany, Megan is in Canada at the Soho house here. He's in California alone. If she's at the Soho house, that, that's a great point. I didn't think about the Soho house because that is her home away from home. That's what she's obsessed with is the Soho house. I've actually thought about trying to get a membership just so if I could be somewhere there aren't and see if I can scope them out somewhere. I think that would be interesting, but you have to like, I don't know, their specific requirements for it. Um, Jane says when, it, when Megan leaves Harry, do you think she'll go for an actor, singer or billionaire or love? Um, I don't know if she can go for anything else other than a person with a bank account. That might sign the mouth might sound callous, but I just think it's totally true. So yeah, we'll see how we'll see where she ends up going, but it'll be interesting to see. Um, Maria says, hi, I'm British. Harry laughed at every picture until he met laughed in every picture until he met his wife. I can't remember what he looks like when he smiles. Say it as often as he likes. The man is not living his best life. Yeah. I think, I think he's deluded. He's self deluded. And Again, it's just to me, even it just it doesn't look like his eyes are ever smiling. It just does not look like his eyes are ever smiling, that he's all that engaged in issues and that he just looks as miserable a lot. And again, money is is a cold comfort if you don't have a relationship with your family, friends. I mean, because even that guy in the op in their reality TV series, like he's so worried, I guess, about backlash. They couldn't even use his last name, which I thought was just silly. And I was like, well, what about Skippy and Skip? Like his actual best friend. Like I've never heard of this Nick guy being his good friend. I, I've i heard of Arthur Landon. I actually did a deep dive once finding the Instagram accounts and stuff of some of his friends. I actually know what Harry's Instagram account is. Um, I'm, I'm pretty positive. It's what it is. But because um, I don't know for sure. Because obviously his face isn't there. But I, I just feel like, yeah. And I like doing like the connections between the various aristocrats. And it's like, none of those people are hanging out with Harry pretty much. None of them are. I think we had the Van Strasby's. We've had at least one or two of them hang out with Harry in California. But other than that, they're like all separated from him and none of them hang out with him. So it's like, well, how can you be living your best life if you don't have any of your friends from like forever? This Nick guy, we've never heard of him before. It's like a new, a new friend for him. Cause he needed a new friend. Okay. Bella. Did you get it? Okay. She made it, guys. She made it. There she is. There's Bella. Um, Pippa's over here on the fluffy, fluffy blanket. You can't see her. But she's on the fluffy blanket. Wondering why I'm talking to myself. <laughs> um, so Susan says, Camilla seems to be bringing Sarah Ferguson back into the royal family. Your thoughts? I don't mind it. I mean, Sarah Ferguson, again, she's a bit of a loose cannon, but she, she genuinely loves the monarchy. That's, I feel like the difference is I feel like Megan hates the monarchy, hates culture, hates tradition, hates history. She, she just, she's one of those progressive who hates all that stuff. I love that stuff. And I feel like Sarah does too. And so even though Sarah, again, she stepped her foot wrong many, many a times that she's used the monarchy to her advantage, but to a certain extent who hasn't. Um, but she's never purposely tried to, destroy the monarchy. She loves the institution. She loved the queen. She loved the Royal family. Megan was never there. And that's why I think unless Megan shows that she has an appreciation for family and his family in particular, don't, don't ever invite her back because even in, oh gosh, what was that? I just said the, I just analyzed the article. It was in the telegraph talking about Megan's absence. And it's like, you know, she was like, well, if he wants to reconnect with his family, that's fine. I, you know, she, her the basic attitude was she didn't care. And I was like, but if that's your husband's family, you should care. You should care if your husband is connected with his family. Uh, you dismissing it just makes me think very ill of you. And so that's, I think, was, um, that's what I think was um, critical. Um Sharon says during the trip to England, could you, we go to Castle Goring? Unfortunately is it's kind of a, 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 the trip is already together. So that wouldn't be an opportunity, but maybe at, um, at some point that could be an option, but you can always go to there afterwards. That would be my only thing. Um, Kimberly says, you're the only commentator I listen to. Love you. Oh, thank you. Sharon number two. Oh, or sorry. 
Oh, goodness. Um, Sharon, thank you so much for the super sticker. You are so kind. Thank you. Okay. Question. Do we think Harry and Meghan will stay invited to the coronation and attend it? Again, huge question mark. I think yes and no. I could see them attending. I could see them not attending. I could see them attending because they desperately need content and the feeling of relevancy. And to reestablish that, yes, you should call them the Duke and Duchess of Sussex because heaven forbid nobody calls them that. Um, but other than that, no. Ah, uh, Mr. K, I'm concerned about you today. You look like you're standing in a sinkhole. I'm trying to centrate, but I have, if I, what? I'm not quite sure, but thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I have my, my thing is pointed down or my camera thing is pointed down, but I'm trying to get myself centered in frame. So yay. Okay. Um, aw, Beverly says brilliant program on YouTube. Mike Tyndall's mic drop with him interviewing Zara. Oh yes, that is very sweet. Mike Tyndall and Zara are just a lot of fun. Although I will say sometimes they look like they have a little bit too much fun. Um, but it's just really interesting to see all these dynamics come to play. Mad Eye says, what will you cover in the future after the saga with Harry and Meghan are over? Oh my gosh, so many things, so many things. So I wanna cover William and Catherine more. I wanna cover all the royals. My goal has always been to cover all the royals. The, the thing I run into a lot is just time. Uh, the videos take a long time to edit and longer than you might think. And I try to minimize, you know, weird breasts or, you know, swallowing or those sorts of things, you would be surprised how many little ticks there are in your voice. And so I try to, minim I try to minimize those and I try to get, you know, pictures, although I've, I've stopped putting as many pictures in because honestly, unless I really need to, it's just very time consuming. So I try to, so I do want to do so many other things. So there's just so many things in terms of history of, of the other Royals. I mean, there's just so many scandals we don't even talk about, you know, um, Maria Teresa in, in Luxembourg, she is, has very much a Megan style reputation of being a diva and being rude to staff members and everything. Like she had like a public bust up with one of her staff members recently, the woman left and there's like a full on investigation into what happened. But, and then we have, you know, all this stuff going on in Sweden where they're able to be very much better together. And then there's obviously this whole thing with Carl Gustav and his just obvious, just very much seems like a bit of old fuddy duddy mixed in with, he just likes his son better than his daughters, which I think is so sad. <laughs> so there's just so much, so much going on. And we had the title situation in Denmark and I'd love to. So, um, Prince Joachim and his wife, Marie, are moving to Washington, D.C. here before too long. So it'd be great to interview them. And then maybe um, Princess Madeline of Sweden. She lives in Florida. And we also have the Greeks who are still living in um, Crown Prince of Greece, who lives in New York, in London. So it's just so many different things, so many other things going on, guys. There's just so much that I can't even get to. I'm going to start doing some more shorts hopefully next month so short per day with a little bit of royal news about what's going on beyond harry and megan but again i'm not on the ground to report so that makes some things kind of difficult so that's why commentary makes more sense so anyways i hope that helps uh andrea oh thank you so much for the tip you are so kind oh sharon oh thank you so much for the super sticker Oh, AC, I've watched a ton of royal history since you are on and any thought about a channel series of reporting historical news that is it happens live from the time period reporting the daily or weekly news. That's actually kind of a fun idea. I kind of like that, like doing it. Queen Elizabeth the first today. Will she get married? Will she not? Who knows? Or like reporting from the battle of sea battle or something or gosh, reporting her death and then Charles ascend no James ascending the throne and the questions about that and I've been reading a lot about um Eleanor of Aquitaine so that would be fun that would actually be kind of fun um but yeah lots of reporting from about the other time periods too because there's so much royal history I feel like sometimes people forget like some of these families go back literally centuries to basically the the founding of Europe as we know it today in a lot of ways. And so it's just, there's so many deep connections. And what's amazing about these families too, is that they overlap in so many different ways. It's, it's not as common now because you don't have the dynastic marriages. So you don't have royals from different, different families marrying each other. Uh, so we have, I 
well, greater expansion of the genetic code within the royal bloodline, which is a very good thing in some cases. But you also just don't have those dynastic connections because I just thought it was interesting reading about Eleanor. You know, she was the mother and grandmother of, you know, kings and emperors and queens and empresses. Oh, I don't know if there's an empress in the mix, but you get the idea. So she has been somebody who has had so many great descendants. And so there's so many different connections and like a ton of different royal households. Crunchy Dragon, all thank you so much for the tip. You were so kind. All Jane says, I love how Eugenie didn't announce her pregnancy at Kate's Christmas concert. She has the class to know better, unlike Megan. Her ruining Eugenie's reputation was unforgivable. Yeah, it was a reception. Yeah, it was so totally obvious that Eugenie was pregnant. I know somebody said, well, you don't, you shouldn't say she's pregnant because, you know, you don't know. Like, because she, she does, you know, tend to gain weight a little bit easier. And that's the problem I struggle with, too. I have absolutely a ton of sympathy for that. But I totally noticed that compared to last year, she would clearly gained weight. And I was like, I don't think she would gain weight like that unless she was pregnant. And she was. That was super exciting. Aw. Uh, Mama AT says, I heard this morning that there will be a motion to remove their titles. They have to write up the bill should be ready by mid-September or February if Harry and Meghan don't want to give it up themselves. Is that true? I haven't heard that specifically. Obviously, I've heard something's been bounced around. But my understanding is as well is that Charles and the prime minister aren't really focused on that. Obviously, there's a cost of living crisis. There's other, other issues going on. So there's a... I think a desire to kind of bury their heads in the sand. But I really feel like in this instance, it would be best if they just said, yeah, no. <laughs> I think, I don't understand why they don't just do that and just move on. Um, Donald, Ella, Cassie, thank you so much for the super sticker. You are so kind. Oh, and Spring Burb, thank you so much. I do really appreciate it. Andrea, good morning. So I heard Megan is hiding because she's feeling scared and vulnerable now that the Taliban is vocalizing their anger towards Harry's kill account. Well, if that's true, then she should have exercised some of her smarter judgment as the wife to prevent Harry from doing something so catastrophically dumb in his memoir. <laughs> that's just my thought there. Um, what do you think about the picture taken in Buckingham Palace when King Charles was waiting for his mother's hearse? I mean, I understand that the media wanted a picture or something like that. I just do find it interesting that Harry and Meghan were the only other people in the shot, that they were the only other people that happened to be particularly there. Although I don't think we got a full view of the other side. So Catherine and William might have been right next to him as well. But again, I think Harry and Meghan, they just so utterly catastrophically miscalculated what would happen when the queen died. And so they were like, I felt like literally scrambling to try to get as much attention to themselves or as, insert themselves as much into the royal fold as they could in that moment because they really needed to. And because I think they really wanted to go to the diplomatic reception and then we're told, no, they shouldn't have gotten an invitation. We don't know why they thought they were going. <laughs> and it was such a burn. It was such a burn. And so I just, I kind of loved it. Cause I was like, yeah, why did you guys think you were going to go to a diplomatic reception when you have no connection to the monarchy anymore, except for being family members, no other family member gets to go. But again, I feel like, again, they, for, for some reason, I don't know how it is that, Somebody as supposedly smart as Harry and Meghan could not figure out that if you left the British monarchy, what happens? Well, you lose all the privileges. So <laughs> apparently that is a mystery to them. That is an absolute mystery to them. Um, you're right on royals. Andrew now wants to withdraw a settlement as GM says photo faked. Buckle up. Fasting 2023 for royals. Glad we have you. Great work on your channel. Oh, thank you. Yes, I am always um, on the side of, well... It's, it's hard to say because, yes, you want to believe Virginia, but at the same time, there's no way to prove it. There's just not. Unless there's a smoking gun somewhere, there's just really no way to prove her story. So if Andrew wants to fight against it, I would say okay because I think he really overpaid her. He paid her like $12 million for a case that cannot be proved. That's ridiculous. He paid that because his family was forcing him to settle and – you know, he perhaps was involved in her in some way and he should give her money, but we don't know if he was ever told what her true age was. Uh, she, you know, women just generally young women tend to look older. So if he didn't seem to ask, I mean, he's still a perv, but did he commit some, did he knowingly commit an, an illegal act? Did he knowingly, did he know that Jeffrey Epstein was basically 
a, a sex trafficker? Those are the questions that were never answered. And so I just feel like if he does fight and he gets at least some of that settlement back, I would say go for it. Because honestly, you way overpaid her, I think. Um, Becky says, glad Wally's back on Twitter. That's great. All right, let's go down. Uh, for, uh, this is from a comment er earlier. Blurple says, all the royals have had that training. I remember Princess Diana and Fergie having it. Yes, of course. So this is the security training where they do like mock kidnapping attempts and stuff. They've totally done it. My my instance was more like um, both kind of kidnapping. There was actually one pretty intense scene where they did, where it was just like they were threatening someone, I think, you know, fake threatening somebody with a gun and they had the sack over their head. I mean, it was, it was pretty serious. Um, and it was also mock carjackings. Like how fast could you get out of the car? And what was surprising what, that you may not know is that sometimes people just get, they, they practice it because people get so flustered that sometimes even the simple act of unlocking, unhooking your seatbelt and getting out of the car can just not happen. Like your body just can't function enough because you have so much adrenaline going on. And you know, that, that could be a, the difference between life and death of you getting out of the car versus you going with them. So that's, that's a huge thing. So I just thought that was really interesting. Erica Cooper. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Thank you. Hi, Brittany, you should do a comparison between Princess Margaret and Prince Harry. That would be interesting. Love your content and bubbly personality. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, that would be really interesting because, again, Margaret, everybody suffers with being the spare. The spare is hard. It's it's no doubt. But at the same time, again, I always go back to there's the serenity prayer, which I feel like even if you're not a Christian, is just great life views. It's not actually from the Bible, but it's just a general wise thing. You know, you accept the things you cannot change, learn to change the things you can and the wisdom to know the difference. So there's things you cannot change. You cannot change that you are the spare. And you have to acknowledge that you can't change that and learn to live within that bubble in a healthy way. And I feel like a lot of spares have done that. Some of them have had to walk away from their royal roles because to a certain extent, it's healthier, it's better for them to be away. Um, that's the case with Princess Madeline. She's moved to Florida. That's where she lives full time. She comes back to Sweden in the summers generally and for some of the bigger events. And she brings her children usually. So I think that's really great for her. But for her, like she loves, I think, living in Florida, living in the sunshine. I'm sure she misses Sweden. Um, but I think at the same time, she's also glad to, she was the third child of the King and Queen. So she was the youngest. So I think she enjoys having that separation. And I don't, again, fault Harry necessarily for wanting to leave and do his own thing. I don't totally fault him for that. I have an issue with how he did it, how he's still using his title to try to do things as if he was a royal that I have a huge issue with, especially because he was in the United States doing that. Uh, just massive, massively inappropriate in a lot of ways. That was interesting. Again, the Daily Mail article, if you read it, I posted it on my my Twitter account, um, is that Harry, um, they talked about Harry and Meghan. Well, they did their own things in their own, like, moments where they, they were reflecting on things, or like, inserting themselves into things. And Harry went to Pearl Harbor, and Meghan went to Uvalde, Texas. And I'm like, yeah, Meghan Markle going to Uvalde, Texas for no reason to deliver cheap snacks after taking a $20,000 private jet flight with her whole security apparatus and everything there is not the same thing as Harry going to Pearl Harbor, A, and B, she should never have been there and Harry should have never been given the VIP treatment and then telling us all about it on, on um, Archwell. It's just like that they won't stop with their PR is just crazy to me. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I should have gone ahead and shut the blinds today because the dogs are like every time they see something, they're like, oh, they get so excited. Um, oh, Debbie, thank you so much for the super sticker. Thank you, Katie, as well. I really do appreciate it, guys. Mr. K, I asked a couple of old com um, comrades about Megan and the claim about not being trained in kidnapping training like she had. we had given Princess Kate. She did have similar training until she demanding demanded it stop. Ooh, that is interesting. And that doesn't necessarily surprise me because it's intense. It's intense. And I'm sure she's like, well, I won't need this. And like, I'll know what to do or something like that. But I, and I probably should have participated in that training more, but 
at the same time, I knew I was probably going to transition out sometime soon. And I was like, you know what? This stuff is a little too intense for me because it is very, very intense. So I could definitely see that. And I could also see her demanding it stop because she just didn't even like it. But it's like it. But it was necessary. Like if I was in Megan's position, I would have done that training because I knew it could save my life. It's very serious. Um, Brittany, you should reach out to YouTuber P. Dina in America. She's a royal correspondent. Oh, yeah. I will have to remember that. Thank you. Yeah, I've heard of her before as well. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, good morning, Judith. Good morning from Los Angeles. I don't support Harry and Meghan. Me either. I will say that, if again, if they can actually produce original content, and I should have had this, this stipulation, because I always said, well, if they can produce original content, I'll be behind them. But it has to be that and not using the royal title anymore. You have to drop the royal title. You just look silly. Every time you mention it, I think you look ridiculous. You're no longer in the UK. You're in the United States. Be like, reflect the United States. Don't be like, oh, you need to call me the Duchess of Sussex with, you know, the T capitalized. I just think they look ridiculous and it looks like a desperation thing to, like, let your work speak for itself. Like, do your work. Don't rely on that title. Like, do the work. Be good. Just go by Meghan Markle. She cannot go by Harry Mount or Mountbatten Windsor because she is not a blood royal, believe it or not. So, like Catherine is still legally Catherine Middleton. She cannot change her name to Catherine Mountbatten Windsor or Catherine Windsor because she's not a blood royal. I know. Weird, right? Um, some families are more stipulated about those things than others. Oh, Leanne says, hi, Brittany. I'm from South Africa. I would not encourage anyone to visit this country. The crime is out of control here. We live behind six foot walls, electric gates, alarm systems, etc. Yeah, I've heard it's pretty intense. I've been to I've been to Africa before. I have not been to South Africa. And yes, we lived behind a massive, I want to say it was 10 foot concrete wall for this house we were staying in. And I want to say that the, the guard at the front of the house was armed. Um, so it was, it was an intense thing. And then I forgot something in the car. And so somebody had to go out like in the middle of the night and get it. It was like this whole thing. I just felt so bad. It was just crazy. Uh, Gemma says, um, a lot of, thank you so much for the tip. A lot of Harry's anger seems to be about his own failure to carve out any sort of meaningful role as a spare. Would love for you to do a section on spares that have actually been successful. Yeah. I think that would be great because there have been a lot of successful spares, I feel like most of them that I can think of right now are in the Netherlands. I feel like the Netherlands have been very successful. I think Joachim in Denmark has been mostly successful. Um, I think he's still very frustrated and hurt by his children losing their titles, but he has gone and done his own thing. Um, the, the ones who have really struggled, like in Spain, the King's sisters, uh, one of the King's sisters husband. So this would be his brother-in-law, like spent time in prison for, for financial scandals. And then we've had others, Oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. Um, have I've had others who have been difficult as well. Because I think even the Brits, most of the Brits struggled a bit. But you obviously have Anne who's been very successful. Edward who has been largely successful. And they will, they will struggle with certain things at times. So they'll struggle with trying to, especially I feel like in the first years, they're trying to carve out their role. And I think Harry did have his role, but I think he wanted... I think Megan stoked his desire to want more than that, but not in a healthy way. Not to like, oh, let's do our own thing. We were so smart. It's like, oh, your brother, everybody's. Rather than saying, well, let's do our own thing. It's your family's holding you back from doing your own thing. And so I just don't feel like anything that has been done in an attempt to have him break out of this mold has been healthy. And he has no experience in creative stuff. The guy could barely graduate high school with art as like one of his main focuses and he had to do an art project and allegedly a teacher helped him cheat on that. I'm like, it's art. Art is subjective. Art is entirely subjected, subjective. So this idea that he needed help to cheat on that, to do it to me just boggles my mind. Um, and he always talks about being an African and he is as far away from it as humanly possible. Now, if he had done, if he was with Chelsea Davy, now granted they've broken up. I'm not saying they should get back together or anything. But if you look at what she's done with her life and the direction she's gone, wouldn't that be Harry's perfect career and role, really? In a lot of ways, what he always desired to do. She lives in Africa part-time. She has an African jewelry line or African-based jewelry line that, that sources real diamonds from the continent, you know, 
uh, Chelsea has her degree in gemology and she runs a boutique travel African travel company that does safaris and it does various high end travel arrangements. So <laughs> Harry would have been great at that because he could recommend things. He could be a guide like that role that she carved out feels perfect for Harry. The role Harry is in now is completely Megan's invention. It's completely Megan's invention. He's had, we've had no, no indication ever that he is a creative and wanted to be a producer in Hollywood. Never, never. So that's, that's what I think is sad. Andrea B, thank you so much for the super sticker. So Suzette asks, where are the kids? Who's raising them? Do they really have children? Yes, they have kids. Uh, the kids I'm sure are in California and who's raising them? Um, Megan and the nannies. <laughs> <laughs> I think the nannies are probably doing maybe more of the raising. I don't know. I can't say for sure, but I just, you just get the feeling that I don't know. I just never felt, I just never see Megan as really maternal. And she had that weird bit in like the cut where she was like trying to get in a children's bouncy house. Cause there was like a toddler in there and she wanted to like figure out what was up with the toddler. It's almost felt like, do you not recognize your own kids or something? It was just really weird. Okay, why is no one calling Harry Prince Harming? Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Andrea, thank you so much. Oh, Jeanette says, I love history. My son said he doesn't like history. He said he looks towards the future, not to the past, which I think is healthy when it comes to not living in the past, which is what Harry does. Yes, and I think history as well gives you a fuller appreciation for the present, and it gives you a perspective, a broader perspective of humanity, of our, our culture, our heritage, traditions, history, and everything. It just gives you a much broader perspective of it. And you look at some of these people. These people have done cool things. Oftentimes, by the time they are in their early to mid-20s, because I think of Cesar Borgia, and he was not really looked on fondly by a lot of people, but he spent time traveling with Machiavelli, who wrote The Prince based a lot on Cesar, and then he also traveled, and they also traveled together with Leonardo da Vinci. So you have Leonardo da Vinci, Niccolo Machiavelli, and uh, Cesar Borgia. And they traveled through central Italy, and they were conquering places, and they were taking over places, and Cesar was just kind of crazy. And then he ended up dying at 25, and he, like, led several huge military campaigns in that time. And I think it gives us a perspective, too, I think, just to just to maybe encourage people who just don't think history that is that interesting. It gives us a perspective to not think that we are. I, I think there's such a push, especially within the climate sphere. It's like, we have to save the planet now, now, if we don't do something, the planet's going to, you know, implode and everything. And if you look back on history, we've had warming and cooling periods. There was even a mini ice age in Europe for a period of time. In addition, we also have, um, there's actually been a new, section of archaeology discovered because some of the glaciers have melted and revealed villages. So we have a ton of proof now that the certain areas of the, of the world were hotter than they are now. Um, that's not to say that we shouldn't be good with our planet. Of course, that's not what I'm saying. But I think sometimes we we have this emphasis that we can save things. And I think that's, that's a perspective that is unhealthy because I think then if you don't save something, what happens then? So I just think that's, that's interesting. That's probably not explaining it very well, but I love history. I think it's awesome and amazing. And there are such cool people, like really, really cool people who've done incredible things. And you can't really go, if you go to the future and you don't look at the past, you can't learn the lessons of the past. And I think that's critical. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Um, Sharon, thank you for all your hard work you are doing. You are very talented and really know your subject. Thank you. Yes, I, I decided recently, I filmed a video last night about the whole variety piece and I'll get it up tomorrow talking about how I was like, I should tell people I've been watching Royals for 10 years and I'm a historian. And so it's like, I do, I do pretty much know my stuff. <laughs> um, good, oh, New Market, good morning, Brittany. Love to see uh, you on this bright, cold day. Great channel. Thank you. You have Maria as well. You're doing your great job, Brittany. I wake up just to catch your lives. Oh, thank you. I I feel sad because I know some people get up really early too, but I don't want to leave it too late either. Question, are you going to cover the Jordans, Jordanians this year? They have two weddings coming up, first one in, um, in June and one of their daughters a month later. Um, I'll probably cover it in terms of sharing pictures about it, maybe writing about it, but I don't think I'll probably go there because I'm planning on being in Europe um, after after the trip 
for um, for England with those who are going with me to um, London and the Cotswolds. After that, I'm going to travel around Europe quite a bit, hopefully making connections with various publicity offices and those sorts of things. In addition, Swedish National Days on June 6th. So I'm planning on going over there to cover that. Um, yeah, I just don't know enough about Jordan to probably get over there unless um, I plan on probably reaching out to their PR team at some point um, and maybe – There'll be an invitation, probably not, but mostly I'm focusing on right now is the European Royals just because they are uh, a bit closer together. It's just a bit easier to get to them. And then, um, cause I just don't know enough about the Jordanians. I feel like to really do them justice. And that's the same thing about the, the Japanese. I don't really cover them either. It's kind of the same thing. Um, Julia says, love you to meet you when you are in the UK. Brittany, any chance for us UK citizens who watch your channel? Yes. I'm trying to think of, I think it would be cool to do a really interesting reception type thing. So I'll try to figure out, um, I haven't, I would like to do it like a really cool historical place. So I I'm trying to figure out what that might be. Cause I just thought it would be fun. I'm hoping to maybe launch a podcast this year. So I have some ideas for that and it'd be like cool to like announce it and do something for it in the UK. But again, we'll have to see how it all comes together. Um, Lizzie B, can Harry live in the U.S. with a diplomatic visa without applying to have an American citizenship? He's no diplomat. He's a private citizen. I imagine his visa is actually not for diplomacy because he's, he's not a diplomat. I think his visa is like a special talent visa. I think that's what he has. Um because you have to have a specific requirements to meet the diplomatic visa status. And he's no longer an internationally protected person. So that doesn't give him that status anymore. And he could also get his visa via that he is married to an American citizen. I'm not sure quite like the K-1 visa. So that may not be, um, that may not um, be something that he, um, so I think that he'll be, he'll be fine without that. I think he'll be, he'll be fine. Um, Pamela says, Eleanor of Aquitaine is my 24th great, great grandmother. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Harry's ghost says, does anyone have some extra Elizabeth Arden? I did actually finally manage to get some of that cream. It is the non scented kind. That's really cool though. Um, Jane asks, would you ever do this? Ever quit your day job? Uh, I am actually planning on it. So yeah, I want to do this because it would require a lot of travel, I think, to make some of the aspects of the plan work. So that's something I want to do. All right. Shorts idea. Shorts idea. Royal etiquette lessons, curtsies, teas. Ooh, that would be fun. I would love to learn how to like do an official really nice curtsy because there's some ways to do it that are awesome. Sorry, I'm sitting on something. Um, Lucy says, I can't help to f help feel that Harry settled for mega liar because she was, uh, he was tired of being single. So this is from Lucy. Thank you so much for the tip. Yes, I can see definitely him settling he just was wanted to be married so bad and he just grabbed the first woman who was interested and that happened to be megan or any woman who seemed to in, like be able to manage the media spotlight and i feel like he, when he went for her he was like oh she she doesn't know anything about us look she didn't know who andrew was she didn't know who x y and z was like of course she knew who they were of course she did i mean he makes her sound like such a dullard sometimes um but yeah, he was desperate for someone and Megan was desperate to get married. And she really wanted a, a high ranking man for her, the father of her children or a guy with a lot of money or whatever. So she managed to find him. And I just, I really don't think he would be attractive to many other women. Um, at least anymore. I used to think he was kind of cute because I really liked, there was this one picture of him when he was in the Coliseum and I was like, oh, he appreciates history. I was like, no, nah, he's just. Ugh. like she may she takes a man and makes him so unattractive it's like almost unfathomable how bad it is oh jp thank you so much for the tip thank you so much for your great work on rn and these super fun lives cheers to your pups any decision on your coronation wardrobe so i actually have a video for my fashion channel that i i, I filmed last night and i have an amazing blazer to share and it looked, I, I was like filming it. I kept looking at myself on camera in this place. I'm like, this looks so good. Like the color is, mwah, the color is beyond amazing. So um, I may wear that. Well, that would be only if I was like covering, able to cover, cover it. Um, I'm going to work on trying to again, get some media arc press credentials. So at least I don't have to. I don't have to what I, I don't have to like get up at the crack. I mean, I would still have to get up really early, but I don't want to battle the crowds with my equipment 
and stuff because I plan on taking my camera and hopefully maybe I can even take my roller bag with my camera gear in it because I just bought that. Um, so just tons of stuff. I'm hoping to get like a ton of pictures and images and I have like another camera I want to get and like so many things, guys. So many things. And so hopefully it'll all come together. Oh, Orchid, thank you so much for the super sticker. That is awesome. Oh, yes. Um, Susan W. said, Henry VIII was spared too. He even got stuck with his brother's wife. Absolutely. And reading of Eleanor of Aquitaine, her, it was actually her um, third son. They did have one die in infancy, the, the oldest, but her it was technically her third son who became King Henry, sorry, King Richard the first King, um, the Richard, the lion heart. And so I just thought that was, that was kind of cool. So he was the spare and then he died and he didn't have any heirs. So his brother, King John became the King and King John is the reason we have the Magna Carta and the Magna Carta. Who did that influence? Why it was the declaration of independence and that fun. The, the connections throughout history are so fun. Um, so Becky says, and I think this is just a good thing to mention is that anyone knows these videos coming out on Twitter with um, Megan being um, apparently without a shirt. Um, there, there's something called deep fakes. And I imagine that was what that is. I don't really think that's probably actually her. Uh, so deep fakes are, they are able, they're so good. Now they're able to take a celebrity and basically paste their face on another person. Um, and they've done this with quite a few big names. Like there's a whole, like, I think Tom Cruise thing. And so I just think that's important to mention that sometimes if you see those type of things, there's, I think one picture when Megan was taking a picture of her current or girlfriends in Greece, where they, um, had taken their bikini tops off. But beyond that, um, I don't really think there's anything like that, that exists, especially videos. I saw something that looks similar to that. And I was like, I could tell it was a deep fake. It wasn't real. So again, go with what makes the most sense. Um, Oh, thank you so much, Jessica. If Harry don't want to be spare, I volunteer to suffer in a palace with all the commodities and luxury that the task oh so heavy one entails. Ivy. Yes. Oh my gosh. So here's the thing too with Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan would most likely have taken Edward and Sophie's place and gone to all the fun events in Europe. So Meghan maybe would have gotten to wear a tiara more than Kate because who wears a tiara more than anyone else in the British household? It's Sophie. Because <laughs> Sophie goes to all the weddings, all the birthdays. And usually those have TR events. And so it's like, why would Megan give that up? I have no idea. Because at some point, I feel like they would have retired Edward and Sophie from that. But yeah, it's kind of interesting because Edward and Sophie, even though he's like the spare, the spare, the spare, gets to go to some of these very, very swanky events that normally the somebody who is that far down the line of succession would never go to. All right. Um, Tanya Tolly says, polls suggest Harry and Meghan are very unpopular in the UK. Do you think King Charles may work with Parliament to remove them from the line of succession? And thank you so much for the tip. I think, I think he's, I think Charles is, is softer on this issue. So I think he won't probably go on it quite as hard as the others would. But I think at the same time, if there's enough Parliament saying, we want to do this, we want to do this, I think he'll finally cave. But I think it'll take him a bit. Um, crazy Neko, thank you so much for the super sticker. All right. Uh, Lizzie B says there's a rumor when H was dating Cressida that the RF gave them an option when married to have a more relaxed role. She said, yes, he said, no, he never wanted to peace, but he always was preparing for war. I could see that. I could see him kind of saying that, uh, I, she, she, she wanted to be an actress and she had a pretty, pretty decent role. And I can't remember what it was called. Now it was about the murders though in, um, in England, um, four, four or five members of the family were shot. And he, the brother, the character that Cressida played, her brother framed her for the murder. And it was actually really good. White house, the, the white house farm or something like that. It was on HBO max. Um, I thought it was very good and she wasn't in it a ton, but, um, I think, yeah, she wanted to be an actress and I will give her props, even though dating Harry did raise her profile. I didn't feel like she took a huge amount of, of advantage over that. Um, and I, and it didn't parlay into a super huge and successful career for her. She had some decent roles, but never was a, a huge, huge bit in the acting world. So I'll give her props for that. Um, 
Susan asks, do you get the sense he settled for kind of actress? Yikes. In some ways they are co-match and co-defendant ways. Yeah. I think he, he does. I think he settled. Um, but I think he, well, I don't know if he would say that. I think he is utterly infatuated with her. He thinks she is the greatest thing since sliced bread. So I think he's utterly entranced by her. Um, but I hope that entrancement is slowly beginning to erode because I hope reality is hitting in the, him in the face just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right. Cindy, all thank you so much for the super sticker. All right. I'll just catch a couple brief things here. Maybe Angela Levin can point you in the right direction for press credentials. I am. Well, I will ask, actually ask her that. Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know where to go. Um, Brittany, make sure to get some great padded sandals since you're going to be moving around covering all these events. Yes, I will have. I had these um, like Adidas shoes I used in the UK last time. They ended up being fabulous. They were very comfortable. And I walked around the whole time. Because, yeah, you are on your feet a long time. And I'll be honest, it gets tiring. <laughs> it gets really tiring. Um, and especially if you're just stuck in one spot. So that way, hopefully, if I can get press credentials and just move. So if you don't know, if you've never been there's, there's where the crowd is. And so there's one barrier there. And then there's another barrier about five, six feet in front, maybe even 10 feet. And so it kind of keeps this chasm between and it gives ex more space between, but as the crowd comes in, you slowly kind of get smushed as more people come in and your ability to move becomes less and less. Um, and Given some of the stuff I have, I don't really want to camp out overnight. Otherwise, I would. Like, if I had a, like, old cadre, but I have expensive equipment. So, I don't really want to camp out overnight. Um, but hopefully, well, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, Jelena, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you, Trina, as well. Okay, guys. I think we'll probably wrap up here in just a minute or so. Um, so, Sandra says, Brittany, I wish I could go to England on your trip. I have been to Westminster Abbey, Tavlin, and the Cotswolds. Also lovely. I have not been. I've been to most other places, but I've never been to the Cotswolds. But I've, I've heard it's just so pretty. So, I'm so, so excited to go to go there. Um, <laughs> Jane Bryan says, talent visa. Well, he can juggle, I suppose. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that. Oh, Michelle, this is a great question. We'll end on this because this is fun. Are you expecting tiaras at the coronation? Oh, one of my lights just died. Um, yes, I am. For Catherine and Catherine for sure. Camilla will wear a crown of some kind. Catherine for sure will wear a tiara. Um, maybe even a crown. That that could be a possibility. When it comes to tiaras, I imagine it'll be working members of the family beyond that. Because Charles wants to do something less flashy than than everybody else, I just don't see him going full steam with um, everybody wearing massive tiaras. Just don't see that happening. But Catherine for sure, Camilla um, will wear a crown. And perhaps I'm kind of hoping, one of the things I'm hoping for is the little royals wearing a crown. I think that'd be so cool. So yes, guys, thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Um, I'm so grateful that you were, guys were all able to make it. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. All right, bye.